This is Enleisure, your weekly window to the world of business and guide to the good life. Hosted by Mr. Ray Butch Gamboa. Hello everyone, this is Ray Butch Gamboa for Business and Leisure, your business and lifestyle electronic magazine. And as always, we shall have for you the latest significant business developments and interesting leisure features. Let's now call on our very lovely sunshine girl, Dame Munzayak, to guide us through the leisure portion of our presentation. Hi Day, how are you doing? Hi Butch, I'm doing perfectly fine. So tell us, Day, what's in store for our leisure seekers in our lifestyle section this time? Right Butch, well I got another exciting lineup this week. Well, you heard me right guys, as always, it is my job to give you the lifestyle section of our show. Well, we started right away with the latest and trendiest events in and even out of the metro. And for our ever popular segment, Places, we went all up to the breezy and cool place of Antipolo and we've got a quaint cafe for you to discover. More dining discoveries for you with our recommended food destinations. And last but definitely not the least is our special feature on our sports shoot segment. Well, see, like I've mentioned earlier, another exciting show awaits you guys. And all you have to do is hang in there as we talk with some serious matter of business with our main man, Mr. Ray Butch Gamboa. Back again to you, Butch. That sounds like one heck of a leisure report you have for us, Day. So just hang on there. We'll be back to you in a short while. Sure, I'm just here patiently waiting, Butch. Lovely sunshine girl, Damon Sayak, with what's in store on our leisure report. We now pause for a short break, and when we come back, we'll talk business on BizWatch. Please stay with us. Vote for your favorite car models and stand the chance to win autofocus t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other valuable giveaways. Vote for your Automobile of the Year and this year's Autofocus People's Choice Awards and win prizes from daily electronic draws. To participate, log on to www.autofocus.com.ph. Creating an engine is like creating a great perfume. You need to select the best ingredients and combine them in a unique way. So it gives you a feeling you'll remember for the rest of your life. Peugeot 308 with Blue HDI and Turbo Petrol Engines. automobile enthusiasts. Autofocus.com.ph is exclusive to the automobile where you'll find reviews on the latest brand new car models, together with their head-to-head -head comparisons. It has the detailed specs of car models available in the country and their latest SRPs and special promos, together with the latest auto industry news and developments like car launches and test drives. Autofocus.com.ph is all about automobiles. Click on!
Welcome back to Business and Leisure as we usher in our business section. This is BizWatch. And now for our lead business item, the proposed tax reform measures initiated by the Department of Finance is apparently seeing light in Congress. This after some uh, lawmakers favorably modified some provisions of the value-added tax exemptions. Here's our BizWatch correspondent Heidi Santos with the story. The Department of Finance expressed satisfaction with the new version of the tax reform measures after careful scrutiny by our lawmakers. According to Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III, the new version could potentially fetch around 130 billion pesos for the government coffers. However, this figure is still lower than the original estimate of the DOF, which stood at 160 billion pesos. The new DOF projection of 150 billion pesos, on the other hand, is higher than the estimate of Congress and the National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, which was at 82 billion pesos. Finance Under Secretary Carl Kendrick T. Chua explained that the projected income is higher because they made the generic repeal stronger on the VAT exemptions. Yusek Chua said that the Department of Finance is still very determined to push in the Senate for itemized provisions for the VAT exemption regime instead of a generic rule. The House passed on the third and final reading the first of the four tax reform proposals under the Duterte administration. These tax reforms are expected to generate enough revenue to boost the present administration's efforts of beefing up the country's infrastructure. Among others, the tax measure seeks new duties on petroleum products and sweetened beverages. More of the story with our BizWatch correspondent. While new duties are going to be levied on petroleum products and sweetened beverages, there will be a reduction in personal income taxes as promised by President Duterte before he was elected. The new version of the tax reform package, as approved by Congress, is now ready to be transmitted to the Senate for deliberation. Secretary Dominguez, meanwhile, has been holding constant talks with at least 23 senators about the important aspects of the bill. However substantial is the revenue we expect to generate from the new tax reform, it is clearly not enough to fund the full infrastructure of the government, according to Finance Secretary Dominguez. The Duterte administration's infrastructure program will cost the government some 8 trillion pesos. Secretary Dominguez says the government can finance part of the difference through loans. The 25th Franchise Asia Philippines Expo is scheduled on July 19 up to July 23 at the SMX Convention Center in Manila. Expect another successful run of this quarter of a century old expo as Alan Escalona, president of the Philippine Franchise Association and the 2017 committee in charge are blazing new trails for the franchise show. Our business reporter Andre Ko has the details. The theme for this year's 25th Franchise Asia Philippines Expo is Innovate and Replicate, a say and rising. According to Alan Escalona, President of the Philippine Franchising Association, or PFA, the franchising sector sees the need to address innovation and expansion challenges in the global market. Escalona cited the fact that many brands have faded in recent years and there is a clear need to continue to innovate in order to survive. PFA has invited many seasoned speakers and experts who will talk on topics like innovation and market opportunities during the expo. Topics include global market trends that should drive your innovations, innovation for international growth, overcoming challenges in expanding across ASEAN, amazing technology breakthroughs, and disruptive innovation, among others. Go Negocio, Moving Spirit, Joy Concepcion, and Senate Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship Chair Juan Miguel Zubiri will keynote the big event. The first floor of the venue will showcase food, non-food and international and regional exhibitors. The rest of the venue will have the food park and allied services and will host the education seminars. The rest of the details with our business reporter. 
Franchise Asia's overall chairperson is Shell Quintana, while Jose Magsaysay III is Franchise Asia Philippines Expo's chair. Magsaysay said that they hope to exceed the 45,000 mark that the association achieved last year in terms of the number of visitors. Quintana, on the other hand, said that they will be offering various innovation solutions and strategies for growth and overcoming challenges in international expansion. Educational seminars will be a big part of this year's expo. A mini-MBA on Certified Franchise Executive Program will be held separately on July 17 and 18 at the AIM Conference Center in Manila, according to Quintana. Some 50 experts from all over the world have been invited to share their expertise in the expo, according to Franchise Asia Philippines Conference Chair Sam Christopher Lim. They will also continue to hold the Certified Franchise Executive Program, which will be facilitated by American franchise expert and owner of Synergy Franchise Group, Mr. Christopher Simnick. At this point, we will have to take a short break and we will be back shortly with more current and relevant business issues for you. I'll be right back. Please stay with us. Vote for your favorite car models and stand a chance to win autofocus t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other valuable giveaways. Vote for your Automobile of the Year in this year's Autofocus People's Choice Awards and win prizes from daily electronic draws. To participate, log on to www.autofocus.com.ph. Always ready when the unexpected happens. When you sweat to be sweet and you clean our seat, it's love. it's love. When you try to look cool but you look like a fool, it's love. It's love. It's love. Love. Show your love with the new features of the all-new Innova. Love the journey. Happiness. Happiness times seven. The all-new Honda Mobilio. Ease of use. Flexible interior for your various needs. Convenient features. Advanced technology. Powerful engine. Fuel efficient for a smooth journey and sleek design for you. The all-new Honda Mobilio. Ford Ranger, always ready when the unexpected happens. Ordering today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just a click away. Welcome back and you're still on Business and Leisure and we continue with more business news developments. More on the tax front, the move of the Duterte administration to reduce the current tax incentives granted to outsourcing companies in the Philippines is worrying our BPOs. They said that this move could derail the expansion of existing firms and the prospective investors' plans to come to the Philippines. Our Biswatch correspondent Heidi Santos files this report. A well-known global property management firm Colliers International Group said that removal of the current set of fiscal perks granted to outsourcing companies will derail existing firms' expansion and may deter prospective investors from coming here. This move will also weaken the Philippines' position as one of the most attractive sites for BPO operations in the world. 
One of the measures sponsored by the Department of Finance is the rationalization of fiscal incentives to foreign outsourcing companies operating in the Philippines. The first package of this tax reform program entails the removal of the value-added tax exemption of BPO's sales and imports. Here's more of the story with our BizWatch correspondent. What this means is that BPO firms' transactions will now be subjected to a VAT that is equivalent to 12% of its gross receipts if and when the tax reform measure is approved. Industry stakeholders argue that the tax incentives have lured big business process outsourcing and knowledge process outsourcing or KPO companies to put up their business in the country. The measure is seen to diminish the Philippines' competitiveness as a major outsourcing hub, according to Colliers. In addition, nine Philippine cities included in the list of top 100 outsourcing sites in the world will lose a major competitive edge once the fiscal perks are rationalized. In the ASEAN region, our emerging competitors are Kuala Lumpur, Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam, and Singapore, which belong to the upper third of the top 100 outsourcing sites. Manila is considered as the second most competitive BPO destination in the world. The other cities in the Philippines are Cebu, which is 7th, Santa Rosa, which is in the 81st place, Bacolod City, number 85, Iloilo City in number 90, Dumaguete in 93, Baguio City in 94, and Metro Clark in 97. At present, the BPO industry employs 1.1 million Filipinos, and in 2016, it generated 23 billion US dollars in revenues. One can imagine why the removal of the zero VAT benefit war is not only the BPO sector but other sectors as well. PESA Chief Charito Plaza is fighting for the exclusion of PESA accredited buildings and locations from the removal of the zero VAT rating. And for our final business issue this week, Word has it that the good old calendars and planners are as old as yesterday's newspaper. People now are hailing the entry of tech gadgets and even main vanity items. Andre Ko, our business reporter, has the details. The World Expos and Concepts held this corporate giveaways 2017 expo last June 13 to 15. Traditional giveaways like calendars and planners are, according to the organizers, passe because nowadays, people use their smartphones to log down their daily schedules. However, as far as calendars go, there is still quite a big demand for Chinese calendars which tells us about the moon positions, seasons and tides and the like. Other traditional giveaways like mugs and umbrellas still account for 40% of the exhibitors in the Corporate Giveaways 2017 Expo. However, perhaps because of their constant utility. Giveaway will stay with a consumer for a longer period of time because they keep it and then they use it, especially if it's useful. Um, rather than, let's say, a billboard which you pass by, maybe you'll remember it for a few months or a few weeks, but it doesn't really stay with you as long as a giveaway would. So that's, that's the edge of giveaways and that's why I think the show has um, stayed here for so long. In this day and age, the trend though is going towards tech gadgets. The emerging new corporate giveaways now include travel accessories, men's grooming items like water-based pomades, tech ties, and other vanity men's items, which is an entirely new category. Men now have specific products that are distinct from women's beauty products. Promotional merchandising is now big business because it costs much less than buying advertising space and other traditional forms of advertising. With all the modes of advertising available right now, like digital, you have advertising on Facebook and things like that, companies always need to find an edge um, over other companies, especially if you don't have a big marketing or advertising budget for like a big tri-media campaign. So giveaways actually help help companies get their brand out there because they can go directly to their target market without spending as much. Based on studies, 89% of people who receive a promo item in the last 24 months can still remember the name of the company that gave away the promo gift. 50% of these recipients also tend to keep the promotional product up to 4 years. And 53% of consumers use a promotional product at least once a week. It is quite true that corporate giveaways create brand recognition and create goodwill and customer loyalty. Studies also show that 85% of consumers 
do business with a company after receiving promotional products from them. And with that, we end this week's edition of BizWatch. We shall pause for another break and when we come back, we have another flourishing business venture for you on Strictly Business. I shall be right back. Vote for your favorite car models and stand a chance to win autofocus t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other valuable giveaways. Vote for your Automobile of the Year and this year's Autofocus People's Choice Awards and win prizes from daily electronic draws. To participate, log on to www.autofocus.com.ph. Creating an engine is like creating a great perfume. You need to select the best ingredients and combine them in a unique way. So it gives you a feeling you'll remember for the rest of your life. Peugeot 308 with Blue HDI and Turbo Petrol engines. Calling all automobile enthusiasts. Autofocus.com.ph is exclusive to the automobile where you'll find reviews on the latest brand new car models, together with their head-to-head -head comparisons. It has the detailed specs of car models available in the country and their latest SRPs and special promos, together with the latest auto industry news and developments like car launches and test drives. Autofocus.com.ph is all about automobiles. Click on! Welcome back and you're still on the business section of Business and Leisure. Coming right up is our Strictly Business segment. Our upcoming feature on Strictly Business is all about a homegrown talent who is now slugging it out with the big boys in terms of track bodybuilding. Our Filipino entrepreneur has successfully hurdled all the challenges that came his way including his humble beginnings to become a respected manufacturer. Marlon Taunan is one person who looks back with gratitude to people who have made him richer in experience and in skills and who have made him who is now a well-respected businessman. He was an undergraduate when he applied for work in a manufacturing plant that makes truck buddies. He remembers feeling intimidated by everyone else in the office who could boast of college degrees or professional licenses. But he didn't make his humble beginning affect his performance. Actually, uh, from the humble beginning, ano, nang, uh, nung nag-start ako na, na maging empleyado, actually, alam nyo, uh, 
ako ata when I started working with uh, the my last ano company ako yung pinakamababa kasi ano eh uh, kumbaga sa lahat ng staff ako yung pinakamababa started with that ano no, position then little by little uh, yun na uh, yung presidente namin na which is uh, siya yung actually nakadiscover sa akin doon sa talent and kasi that time ako para ako lang yung ako lang yung ano eh sa lahat ng staff ako lang yung undergrad so most of the yeah yeah most of the my my colleagues ano puro if not uh, graduate license pa so one time nga uh, discover ako ng presidente uh, then kita niya ako pa paano siguro ako magtrabaho hanggang sa dandahan so na promote ako ang dami kong promotion because of yun, yung trust, na bin, trust and confidence na binigay sa akin ng, ng boss ko before. Doon nag-umpisa lahat yan. So, ako naman that time, during that time, uh, basta may pinagawa sa, kasi sa akin, ang ginagawa ko talaga, result eh. More on result, ori uh, result oriented kasi yung boss ko eh. So, ako ganun din. So, gusto ko lagi pag ano, may resulta. When he started out in the company, he literally started at the bottom, the lowest paid job in the company. Maraming tao na ang tagtingin nila, pag ito lang na pag ito lang tinapos mo, tinutuldukan na. Ito lang naman ako eh, di ba? Ito lang naman natapos ko. So, ang gando na lang talaga. Sabi ko, pag ikaw tumuldok sa sarili mo, wala ka na mararating eh. Tinuldukan mo na nga eh. Pero pag sinabi mo, kaya ko to, mas magaling ako dito, may meron pa akong pwedeng gawin. So, something ganun yung naging ano ko. At sabi ko at that time, there undergrad ako nun, medyo mahirap yung competition. Maraming din naniniwala sa akin. The only people na alam kong naniniwala sa akin that time is yung presidente. Everyone else in the company, including all the managers, underestimated his talents. Nawala na lang yung parang agam-agam nila or something na pili nila sa sip-sip ako nung inandal ko na yung ISO as QMR, ako kasi nag-QMR. Kasi yung first time namin mag-attempt, hindi kami nakapasa, something gano'n eh. So, hindi kami nakapasa. Then, nag nagpa-schedule kami for audit. Tapos ako may yung tumayong QMR. Because many of his colleagues were licensed engineers from Mapua, Marlon felt the need to continue his studies. He pursued a government scholarship program and got his degree after eight years. Then, he took up manager's course in UP, all with the blessing of his mentor, the company president. His name is Mr. Rapi Wan, actually, chef. Oh, ano ko talaga sa kanya yun? Ang laking part talaga. Siya talaga yung nagbigay sa akin, opportunity. With a twist of fate, Marlon heard about bidding for projects related to the very business where he was employed. With not much in terms of capital, he participated in the bidding, and to his surprise, he won the bid. And that was the start of his entrepreneurial venture. He started out as a single proprietor under his own company, MT Trading, which stood for his initials. That was in 2011, but by 2015, he realized the need to get out of the image of being a trading company. He incorporated his company that same year, and investors came knocking on his door. We asked Marlon why CMP. What does it stand for? Yung CMP actually is Christ my provider. Yeah, yeah. Because yun yung parang pasasalamat ko kasi in return dito sa nangyari. Kasi wala naman talaga lahat eh. Diba kung di sa taas din. So Christ my provider talaga yun. Kaya lang nung in-apply namin sa SEC, hindi makapasok yung CMP kasi sa dami. Sa dami ng naka-reserve. So... May pumasok na may pwede lagyan lang yun, kaya nilagyan ko na lang. So, he started out with an office staff of three, and that includes him. With a limited capacity and very little equipment, he found it hard to penetrate the market. Talagang makapasok totally. Uh, gusto ko man, eh, medyo nandun pa rin yung parang, parang nahihiya ako kasi baka pag bisitahan yung planta ko, yung factory, wala naman may pakita, di ba? Wala ka man may pagyabang. Hindi yung yabang, ibig sabihin na ipag... Malaki, ganun naman talaga kasi asses ka. So, yun yung mga panahon na yun na medyo until, yun yan, noong 2015, uh, unti-unti, dahil nakikilala, na, nakikilala, nakikilala. Kasi, syempre, yung mga previous na ginagawa ko na pa isa, -isa before, nakikita na sa, at, na, na pag-uusapan. So, sa, until one, ano nga din, something, ewan ko ba, parang blessing in disguise na, Nagpunta dito yung hapon ng marketing ng Isuzu. 
Eh, ako na paano siya napunta rito. Basta na pasyal dito. No, it's just may dinaanan lang sila. Kasama siya ni parang si Sarah Mill that time. Dumaan sila dito kasi may project naman na ginagawa ko dito. Na, doon naman ako na-credit na ng planta. Kasi nakita naman nung Mr. Inaba, that's the marketing vice president of Isuzu. Na, nakita niya yung gawa namin. That was the big break that Marlon needed to penetrate to the market. From his limited capacity, Marlon has expanded and now has two manufacturing plants and a much bigger staff. Dati, ang office staff ko isa lang. So right now, medyo nasa 10 na kami. So, yun yung naging development. Then, sa mga machines din, uh, before, pinakamalaki kong machine is welding machine. So right now, kahit pa paano, naka-acquire na kami ng yung shearing tsaka bending machine na uh, which is import na import namin from China. So siguro yun yung major development and tsaka yung ano, yung warehouse namin compare do sa previous before is around 400 square lang eh. So right now itong dito, dito sa Valenzuela is around 2000. Doon naman sa Caloocan nasa 3000, almost 4000. So medyo malaki increase with with ano with concern sa with regards sa 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 laki nung nilaki nung uh, factory Marlon is now one of the big boys so to speak and his plants can turn out anything as long as there is a need mga close van so yung mga passenger van yung uh, drop side then lahat ng customized kaya naman namin gawin uh, from from X-ray van, mobile clinic, computer van, school van, or whatever conceptualized uh, body trucks na pwedeng gawin, kaya namin gawin. Na, nagagawa din ng mga, ng, nagagawa, actually, yung mga nagagawa ng mga big companies, kaya din naman namin. And aside from that, yung mga truck mounted na imported, meron na rin kami. Though he has achieved a respectable level of success, Marlon remains grounded because he knows there is still much to be achieved. Ano ang idol ko sa ganyan mga ano is Toyota eh. Di ba si Toyota ang lagi nilang sinasabi? Number two pa lang tayo, number two. Pero ang totoo, number one na sila. Bakit? Kasi pag sinabi ni Toyota number one na sila, baka yung mga tao mag-relax na. Di ba? Hindi na sila mag mag hindi na sila mag hindi, ayaw na, wala na silang i-achieve na higher than number one, di ba? He has bigger plans for his company, including the production of e-vehicles, though he admits that he is still considering other factors for this phase of his production. The capacity of his plants is there, but like everything about Marlin, he is threading cautiously. We ask him to impart some words of wisdom to would-be entrepreneurs out there. Para sabi ko dati, para mas madali kong maalala, yung PGH. Dapat, dapat ang every, every individual actually, dapat maging uh, hunger, yung hunger, kailangan tayo magutom. Alamin mo ano yung gusto mo. Magkaroon ka ng gutom doon sa gusto mong marating, gusto mong pangarap or whatever. Yung G. To achieve that, di ba? Kasi, mara hindi lang, kagaya ko na that time is undergrad, di ba? Ang hirap. Kukukumpit ka sa mga may pinag-aralan that time, parang suntok sa buwan na mananalo ka. Diba? Kasi, siyempre, ang choice pa rin is always yung graduate with license or something. So, yung guts. Kasi, kahit anong, kung wala kang guts para ma-meet mo yung hunger mo, diba? Walang mangyayari. It's useless and everything. Sabi nga ni Manny Pacquiao, eh, diba? Si Manny Pacquiao is the best sample. No guts, no glory nga, eh, diba? Passion. Yung piece of passion. Kasi, pag wala yung passion mo, definitely, you're not growing. Hindi ka mag-grow. Kasi, passion ang Baka pag nagtatrabaho ko, dapat may passion na agad. Kasi pag wala yung passion na yun, definitely, you're not growing. And hindi ka talaga na mag-grow. Marlon has really expanded his skills over the years. He spent 17 years working for his old company, but in only 6 years, he has grown his own company in leaps and bounds. It helped that he developed good working habits when he was just starting. Kung nagtatrabaho na ako na, Hindi ako nagtumitingin sa oras. I mean, hindi ako tumitingin sa salary. Di ba? Hindi ko tinignan yung sweldo ko, hindi ko tinignan yung oras ko na mahaba na pala ako. Ako na naiwan pala sa office trabaho, sa opisina. Na ako pa yung pinagbalit ang sweldo, hindi ako tumingin doon. Basta ang tinignan ko doon yung opportunity ko na ano paano ako mag-grow. 
opportunity na ano yung matututunan ko during my stay dito sa trabaho, di ba? Yun yung naging ano ko. And lastly, Marlon believes that one can limitless and one has to believe that he can do it. Huwag natin tutuldukan yung sarili natin kasi pag sinabi kasi natin, hindi mo na kaya, tapos na lahat. Pero huwag mong tutuldukan. Wasn't that one inspiring story of an entrepreneur who started out from the bottom, worked his way up, and built his own empire with complete faith in his own capabilities? That was the story of Mr. Marlon Taunan, owner of New CMP. That ends the business section of BNL. Our sunshine girl, Dame Monsayak, is all set for her cue to graciously commence with the leisure portion of our show, which is coming right up ahead after we pause for another short break. We'll be right back. Vote for your favorite car models and stand a chance to win autofocus t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other valuable giveaways. Vote for your Automobile of the Year and this year's Autofocus People's Choice Awards and win prizes from daily electronic draws. To participate, log on to www.autofocus.com.ph Always ready when the unexpected happens. ready when the unexpected happens. Motoring Today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just the click away. You are still with us here on Business and Leisure and now we go right on to the lifestyle section as I turn you over to our co-host this time, Sunshine Girl, Day Munsayak. Hello again, Day. If you're ready to go with the leisure report, let's do it. Oh yes, I'm definitely ready, Butch. Well, how about you guys? Are you ready? Well, for those who just tuned in, welcome once again to Business and Leisure, your weekly electronic magazine, and this is the part of the show where we give you the best in lifestyle. And right now, we commence with the brightest and latest events in and even out of the metro. Here now is our Lifestyle Chronicles. Enjoy, guys! BMW now proudly brings you Lifestyle Chronicles. La Germania, Philippines recently invited select members of lifestyle media and bloggers to the cooking demo by one of the country's renowned couple chefs, Roland and Jackie Laudico, at the Guevara's restaurant by Chef Laudico, using ever-efficient and outstanding La Germania appliances. The event was hosted by celebrity host Susie Entrata Abrera. Chef Roland whipped up some of his best sellers, such as the trio of appetizers of Sisig Baskets, Tuna Kilowin Spoons, and Palabok Roll, which was feasted by the guests. 
La Germania, the preferred household brand of professional chefs, home cooks, and foodies, has an array of cookers and ovens that suit the demands of all kinds of culinary needs. Its wide assortment of products from its 5 gas burner range ovens to single burner tabletop gas and electric stoves can also fit any budding cook's budget. I mean, sure, admittedly, uh, as, as years go by, competition becomes more, um, I guess, increases, no? so it's more challenging for us. But at the same time, we're not faced by it because we're very, very confident in our products. We've been here for 45 years, so that has to say something about our experience. Um, and we're very hands-on. Uh, we have our own R&D. We continuously update ourselves on what we're using now. Kait sa design factor, pati sa function, so we're not faced, but we're also not complacent. So alerto kami, and we try to do our best to really uh, evolve with the times. Short and Sweet Film Festival launched their first ever Short and Sweet Film Festival Manila at the Lola's Cafe and Bar in Quezon City. Also dubbed as Esplazas Film Festival Manila, it aims to bridge the gap between amateur and professional filmmakers and have the chance for the winning film to be produced in Hollywood. Short and Sweet is the biggest 10-minute performing arts festival in the world with events in more than 30 cities across 12 countries. Here in the Philippines since 2014, Short and Sweet Theater has been partnered with University of the Philippines, SMRA, and now with De La Salle University, which will be the venue for the screening on July 1, 8, and 15, and 22. Local prizes include Best Film, Best Director, Best Cinematography. Best Screenplay, People's Choice, Best Actor, and Best Actress. Right now, we are launching the inaugural year of Short and Sweet Film Manila. Um, it is an international film festival spearheaded by the Short and Sweet International. So this is the first time na mangyayari tong festival sa Philippines and we are so excited to tell people na we have this platform. We are welcoming 5 to 10 minute films. Um, for the festival and we will showcase the film in De La Salle University for four weekends of July and then we're going to have an international gala. Regional gala will happen sa SM Aura and an international gala na mangyayari sa Hollywood sa Egyptian Theater. Those are the recent events we've got exclusively for you. Well, if you happen to miss some of the trendiest events in the metro, well, don't worry, you can always watch here in our Lifestyle Chronicles segment. BMW now proudly brings you Lifestyle Chronicles. Well, we're here on your favorite segment on the Lifestyle half of the show. And that is Places. Our growing business and leisure crew found themselves in Antipolo, which food enthusiasts are now branding as the newest food haven in the metropolis. They found this interesting coffee shop with an intriguing name. Watch this. This is Sula Cafe, located in the circumferential road of Antipolo Rizal. It's an intriguing name, but before we go into that, one of the two owners, Ruz Escobar, told us why he and his girlfriend Andy Wong, who co-owns this place, settled in Antipolo as the site of their first ever food venture. Antipolo kasi is quickly becoming like a food heaven for a lot of people. Like before, prior to the dawn of the food industry in Antipolo, what we had before within the vicinity is just Maginhawa, Capitolio, I mean, in uh, and Aguil, in BF, I mean, and Dunyub, or in, or in like random places in Makati. That's where the, the, like, the food spots, like the, the nice and unique food spots are. But right now, like ever since like two or three years ago, Antipolo is booming in the food industry, in the food scene. Because like every the, the time when we opened every month, there's a new restaurant or there's a new cafe that's being opened, and uh, right now I can name drop like 16 other coffee shops who are in the same caliber as us. This cozy place is called Sulo Cafe, an intriguing and fascinating name for many. 
Okay, the story behind it is, uh, you know how some people or how most people have their own confined space na tinatawag natin, sulok natin. Like it's this attitude of people to have one corner na sanay natin, sanay tayo lahat puntahan. And uh, it's as simple as that, no? This place basically embodies that whole mindset of people to have one corner na sanay tayo lahat puntahan. So this place manifests that attitude. That, that mind, that insight Now we sometimes need to retreat to our own corners. So we built this place uh, in the hopes that people would consider this as their own corner. Ruse wisely says that for one's brand, one should choose a name that is simple and easy to remember, a name that people can easily associate with. Prior to opening the Sulo Cafe, Ruse was into digital advertising while his girlfriend Andy was into the online shopping business. Both had been saving up for their eventual marriage, but the practical tandem thought their life savings would serve them more if it would be parlayed into a profitable business first. They never had any background in this business and in fact knew next to nothing about running a cafe. But that was not enough to defer the duo from plunging into the business head-on. The first thing that we did was to secure the down payment for the location. And uh, that would dictate the pace, the momentum of your actions to, on your next actions. No? The first check kasi na issue mo is like the biggest check na gagawin mo ever. It, diba, kasi man, may three months kang deposit, three months advance, and uh, mga advances. So, so yun, it will dictate the pace. Kumbaga, there's no turning back na as soon as you issue that first check. There was no turning back from that point on. Right after they issued that first check, they went to work purchasing whatever was needed, using their savings. They did not hire a contractor. Instead, Andy, who lived five minutes away, was hands-on with the construction phase. first challenge was we didn't know how to, to run this place. We didn't have an idea on how the food industry works. We didn't have the suppliers or the know-how to talk to suppliers. We don't know how to operate generally this entire place. So, but what we have though, if there's one thing that nabaon namin when we put up this place, is the discipline that we got from the corporate world. So we spent, ever since we graduated, like a couple of years back, we were in corporate. And then uh, it taught us the discipline to handle a business, to handle money, to handle people. And that's pretty much what we had before. Any, everything else we learned, like 90% of what we know now is our things na hindi namin alam prior to this business. So we learned like as we went as we, as we moved along with the business. But even guts have its limitations. They hired a chef who developed the cafe's menu and pretty much taught them on the economics and dynamics in the kitchen. And then the cafe was ready to go. So there there are two things that we did, two major things that we did, no, to make this place a bit stand out from the from the other from the dozens of coffee shops in the area. First is through the branding. We created this brand as if it's an actual human being. The cafe can seat about 22 between the air-conditioned area inside and the al fresco dining outside. Rue says many actually prefer to stay outdoors because of the cool antipolo air. The cozy cafe makes use of a lot of wooden slats, making it look very Filipino. There is extensive use of blackboard as the cafe's walls, and these boards are used as often as possible by their customers. The reason for the whole chalk idea of, is basically for people to have the sense of ownership for the brand, for the entire place. You know, pretty much how we all do it in our own corners. Bruce and Andy chose to start small. They have about four to six employees to man the cafe all of them driven by the spirit of Pakikisama, which is how they run Suluk Cafe. They use Benguet Arabica beans for their coffee, and here Ruse demonstrates a simple coffee choice, which Ruse and Andy named after their fathers. This is Cafe Antonio. Uh, Cafe Antonio and Cafe Armando, those are two drinks that we called Andy. Andy. So, uh, Cafe Antonio is the name of uh, Andy's dad, whose name is Antonio Wong. And that's basically how his dad likes his coffee. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna serve coffee as if yung tate niya yung umiinom. And uh, it's basically just a customized coffee. You know? 
Okay, copy and to nyo is basically two and a half shots ng na caramel latte lang siya. So, it's a very simple drink. You, you say that to any barista working for a coffee shop, they would gladly do it for you. The milk is steamed first and after the coffee drips slowly down, the steamed milk is poured into the cup and stirred well. Then Bruce adds his latte art. Next, his girlfriend Andy, who co-owns Sulo Cafe, tells us about their best sellers. Hello everyone, so here are the best sellers of Sulo Cafe. So let me start off with our appetizers. So number one is the fish tacos. Fish tacos is made of uh, fish fillet with salsa and cream cheese and um, sour cream on top. So it's a bit spicy but it's not the usual tacos that you have uh, available in other restaurants. So we use fish fillet instead of ground beef. So next one is chili poppers. It's made of molar wrapper and cream cheese inside. So we also put some spices here that makes it spicy and a hint of cheese parmesan on top. So when it comes to our rice meals, we would always recommend the adobo flakes. Adobo flakes rice bowl is made of chicken as its meat. It's not the usual pork um, and it comes with an egg. Uh, next would be the crusted fish fillet. So crusted fish fillet, originally we didn't serve it with rice, but lately we decided that it would, it would be uh, a must or partnering it with rice would uh, attract more customers because you know Filipinos love rice. So this is made of potato puree, crusted fish fillet, and two slices of garlic bread and alfalfa on top. So when it comes to snack or merienda, we would always recommend the spicy chicken bagiza. So spicy chicken bagiza is not your typical pizza. We use baguette bread as its main dough. So instead of seeing the usual pizza dough that we see in other restaurants, we use the baguette bread. So here, it's made of chicken on top, chicken bits, and some cheese on top as well, and spices that make it spicy. And lastly, when it comes to our pasta, we have two best sellers. It always coincides or it always um, compete with each other when it comes to number of sales. So number one is tuyo mushroom. Tuyo mushroom is made of tuyo, uh, mixture of fresh and dried shiitake mushroom and also comes with two slices of garlic bread. And lastly, we have malunggay. It's our version of pesto. So instead of using basil leaves, we use malunggay leaves. And what you see on top are chicken bits and cream cheese. So there you have it. So the next time you wander off to the cool heights of Antipolo, check out Sulo Cafe. Who knows, you may even find your own little corner there. Inviting you guys to visit this place is one thing, but I do encourage you guys more to know more about us, to research about us. If you follow us on Facebook, it's uh, facebook.com slash Sulo Cafe. On Twitter, it's uh, at Sulo, Sulo Cafe. And on Instagram, it's at Sulo Cafe. <laughs> Email us at sulocafe at gmail.com. But yeah, follow us on Facebook, Sulo Cafe, nandun lahat. And also on Zomato. Yeah. That was Sulo Cafe, the latest addition to the food scene in Cool Antipolo. Good coffee, good food, and cool ambiance. What a perfect way to distress from the hustle and bustle of the metro. We've got more in our list, guys, and let's check them out after we pause for another short break. Stay stuck. Vote for your favorite car models and stand the chance to win autofocus t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other valuable giveaways. Vote for your automobile of the year in this year's autofocus People's Choice Awards and win prizes from daily electronic draws. To participate, log on to www.autofocus.com.ph. Think you're tough? Do you dare to go off-road? Or off-key? Do you use your great power with great control? With the new Isuzu D-Max, you're tough enough to be unstoppable. And you're tough enough... Beat the Derek! Hmm? 
to be right back. Is Suzu D-Max tough enough for anything? Creating an engine is like creating a great perfume. You need to select the best ingredients and combine them in a unique way. So it gives you a feeling you'll remember for the rest of your life. Peugeot 308 with Blue HDI and Turbo Petrol Engines. Mission Mirage. Mirage. Make it yours. yours. Calling all automobile enthusiasts. Autofocus.com.ph is exclusive to the automobile where you'll find reviews on the latest brand new car models, together with their head-to-head -head comparisons. It has the detailed specs of car models available in the country and their latest SRPs and special promos, together with the latest auto industry news and developments like car launches and test drives. Autofocus.com.ph is all about automobiles. Click on! See, that was fast, guys, and you're still with me here on Business and Leisure. Are you looking for some good food destination? Here now is our leisure trip to guide you through. Here it is. Here now is our weekly list of highly recommended leisure destinations. Be it fine dining, romantic garden wedding, or a relaxed meal of excellent dishes, the name Illustrado comes to mind. It's one of the few places that serve the best paella in town. Illustrado, located within the walled city of Intramuros. The Highlands Prime Steakhouse is indeed the prime dining destination where you can enjoy the best of prime steak. The Highland Prime Steakhouse serves nothing but U.S. Angus Prime Beef. And the Highlands Prime Steakhouse also serves an array of prime gourmet dishes like the squid ink pasta, topped with a whole prawn of their delectable sea bass that's always juicy and served with mashed potato and a wedge of lemon. And their breads and cakes are baked fresh every day. The Highlands Prime Steakhouse is at the SM Mall of Asia, and that's where you should have your next lunch, dinner, or intimate party. Steak lovers from north of the metro can also enjoy the juiciest prime steaks and other mouth-watering dishes at Highlands Prime Steakhouse located at Estancia, Capital Commons in Pasig. And that's our regular what to enjoy and where to go list. Business and Leisure's weekly guide to destinations and places to go to enjoy the good life. We wouldn't place those restaurants in the bucket list of your next food adventure if it's not worth a try. Now we come to one of our staple segments here on our show and that is Sports Shoot. This is where we feature new firearms that tickle the interest of our gun enthusiasts. But oftentimes we also feature here important Sports Shoot events. Let's all find out what we have this week. Here now is Sports Shoot. Sports Shoot is brought to you by Rock Island Armory, manufactured by Arms Corps of the Philippines. Welcome to Sports Shoot. This is a leisure segment for the gun enthusiasts. The upcoming segment on Sports Shoot will once again veer from our usual feature on firearms. The leading Filipino brand, Arms Corps, has evolved and they would like to share their wider vision with our viewers. Arms Corps, the Arms Corporation of the Philippines, has a new name. It is now known as Arms Corps Global Defense Incorporated, and from its current configuration as an arms and ammunition manufacturer, the company has reorganized itself as a solutions provider for safety, security, and defense. Sports Shoot talked with Arms Corps Global Defense Incorporated Chairman 
Mr. Severo Tuason, about this new development. ACP, what we call with Arms Corporation of the Philippines, was originally formed in 1980, and we've always been just a sporting, and you call it a sporting and individual market, what we call individual market, which only service the individuals. And we did a little bit of security agency, and it, it stayed that way. That's all we were really doing at that time. Over the years, as our market changed, we found that we were getting more and more involved in the defense part of the business. And, you know, we now are focused on supplying the police, military, all the different government agencies that required firearms and ammunition. So, aside from the fact that we also have intentions of doing business outside the country with partners in supplying the defense needs of countries that don't have the capability of doing it themselves. We feel that it's more important for us to go and call ourselves a defense company than just purely a sporting arms company. The company believes that security or defense is not only about hardware. The solution should come with training, parts and repair, and maintenance elements, among others. By shifting, we will now be more acceptable to bid in countries, like I said, countries that don't have their own capability of making their ammunition or their firearms. It also gives us that opportunity to have joint ventures or technical exchanges with uh, other companies that uh, we can benefit from, whether it be firearms, ammunition, explosives. It definitely there will be a change in the products because we will be going to high-powered firearms and this is one product that will be accessible to the public if they can comply with the necessary requirements of owning one. Obviously, we're not going to sell it without any licenses. So, as ammunition, well, we have all the ammunition that I think the public would probably need to have because we make a full range of ammunition, from 22 ammunition to center fire. So, uh, anything bigger than that, I don't think the public would be interested in, in using. Yeah, would not need to, to have at all. We make rifles, sporting rifles, we make revolvers, we make pistols of various calibers, and we make shotguns. And we make a full range of ammunition, pistol ammunition mainly, including the 5.56223 and uh, M1 carbine. And our famous TCM ammunition, which is only exclusive to us. Armscore has made a name in the global arms arena for several decades now, starting in 1972, just before martial law was declared. Over the years, we've been exporting, since 1972. Just before 1972, we started exporting in a small way. And we began with a country, Australia, and then martial law was declared in 1972. And we were banned from selling our firearms in the country because of martial law. So we had to divert everything to export. And so that's how we developed our export market. So we started with Australia and expanded to the US and other countries. So over the years, we've developed an export market of over 60 countries. And about 75 to 80% of our production goes to export today. America being the largest buyer for our products today. They are open to the firearms and uh, business, you know. They love their guns, they enjoy shooting, you know. As a general rule, they are really a gun-oriented country, yes. And with the change of name coinciding with the recently held Tax Expo, which highlighted safety, security, and survival, Mr. Severo Tuazon reiterated the need to buy Filipino. With this expo, we're hoping to encourage buy Filipino. We've been very vocal in trying to convince our government and our police and our military to try our products, you know, because we've been doing it for over 60 years and we export to 60 countries. So why not come to us and buy our products? We have 2,000 people working for our Filipinos 
We have families that depend. We've been supporting this factory of ours for, for 60 odd years, you know. And um, I just think that uh, maybe our country can also give back a little bit to us, you know, and uh, so that we can continue to prosper and become bigger and employ more, more Filipinos. And hopefully the Filipinos don't have to go out of the country and work there. The former Arms Corps Philippines is now Arms Corps Global Defense Incorporated, a major player in the international market today. And that's Sports Shoot, business and leisure segment for the gun enthusiast. Sports Shoot is brought to you by Rock Island Armory, manufactured by Arms Corps of the Philippines. That was another informative feature we had on Sports Shoot. Well, that is exactly what we do here on Business and Leisure, giving you not only informative features, but entertaining as well. Hope you are both informed and entertained with what we have offered you this week. We'll surely come back again next week for another edition of your longest running business and lifestyle electronic magazine. You can also watch us and all segments uploaded via our website and social media accounts. This has been Day, and I'll turn you over again for the last time to our main man, Mr. Ray Butch Gamboa. Take it away, Butch. Thanks, Dave, for another very exciting and engaging leisure report. That was Day Munzayak, our sunshine girl, hosting the lifestyle section of our show. And with that, we end another edition of Business and Leisure. Thank you for staying with us. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. Till the next time, this has been your host, Ray Butch Gamboa. Good business to all and enjoy the good life.